Hello and welcome to McKee Field at Hayden Park. This beautiful venue will lay host to a doubleheader between the Siena Saints and Miami University, where the Red Hawks will look to keep the mojo going from their Wednesday night win over the University of Cincinnati as they defend their home field. I'm Reed Mouse, you're watching the inaugural broadcast for Miami University on Chatterbox Sports. The Red Hawks under Danny Hayden will look to better their 1-7 and seven record as the Saints are looking for their first win on the season. On the bump for the Miami Red Hawks is the lefty to Southpaw, Connor Oliver. Oliver, two starts, one loss on the season already. He's thrown eight and a third innings. Had a really good start last week where he went five and one third innings pitch against North Alabama. Indiana Saints come in 0-9, as I mentioned, looking for their first win of the year. And they will line up accordingly. Sean Camacho will be leading off playing center field. Donovan Montgomery will be playing shortstop and batting second. Aiden Stewart will be batting third and playing second. Base. Vince DiNicola will be designated hitting. He'll be cleaning up the Saints lineup. Playing first base and batting fifth will be Matt Livingston. Willie Schwarwick will be catching, and he'll be batting six. Dan Barbero will be playing the hot corner. He'll be batting seventh. Gavin Thornburn in right field batting eighth. And Randall Hine will be anchoring that lineup, playing shortstop. I mentioned Connor Oliver, two starts on the season. And a third innings pitch. He's given up six earned runs. Five of those earned runs came against Georgia Tech and his first outing. Last week, he played against North Alabama in through five, one third inning pitch, one earned run. What was most important was 11 strikeouts, and the first pitch today is a called strike on Sean Camacho. Camacho is leading this Saints team in hitting. 273 hitter. Six hits and 22 at-bats. He finds himself in an 0-2 hole against Oliver. Two twos the count to Camacho. Oliver kicks and deals. Breaking ball right over the heart of the plate. Gets lined into right center field, and it's a leadoff hitter. For the Saints, an errant throw in the field will give Camacho second base. Base hit in the air. We'll have the Saints out and running here in the top half of the first. He started in six of the Saints' nine games. Shuffled around this lineup quite a bit as he fouls one back over the press box. One and two is the count. Oliver coming set once again. One and two is the count. Hit into right field. Going back to chase is Tejada. Tejada's underneath it for the first out. Camacho tags up. He'll take third base as the ball comes back in the infield. So put a runner on third base for the three hole. The second baseman, Aiden Stewart. Stewart, three hits on the season and 23 at bats. 130 hitter. Only one extra base hit. Now that extra base hit was a big fly. Corners and for the Red Hawks. They're in their white jerseys with the red pinstripes. The 1 0 is in there for a called strike. Novak doing a good job working behind the plate. We'll give you how this Red Hawks team lines up defensively in a moment. 
One and one's the count here to Aiden Stewart. Fastball just off the edge. Working that outside of the plate on this lefty-lefty matchup. Stewart awaits the pitch. Swung on and miss. High heater. Brings it 2-2. Two to two. So the Saints looking for their first run. And the first run of the ball game here in the top half of the first. Strike out there on the fastball. Connor Oliver doesn't find the bat. And that's a big out number two for the Red Hawks. And talking to Coach Hayden about Oliver, he said the one thing that has surprised him here in the early going is the amount of strikeouts he's racked up. We mentioned 11 strikeouts against North Alabama last week. You thought with how many strikes that Oliver throws that he'd be more of a contact guy, but he's getting a plethora of strikeouts here in the early season. So stepping in to the box is Vince DiNicola. And he finds himself in an 0-2 hole. DiNicola, 250 on the year. Has started in every game. He's one of the few Saints that has been a constant in this lineup. Leads the team in runs scored. Leads the team in hits. But he has only just one RBI on the year. Called strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night as Connor Oliver works himself out of a jam here in the top half of the first. We head to the bottom. And we'll see the Red Hawks when you come back. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. Welcome back to McKee Field here in Oxford, Ohio, bottom of the first inning. As Red Hawks come to the plate. So we'll take you through this Red Hawks starting lineup. Benji Brokman will be leading off. He's the designated hitter today. Zach McDonald in center field. He's batting second. Ryland Zaborowski will be batting third. Parker Lester is playing first base. He's batting cleanup. Cooper Weiss, shortstop. Out in the five hole, Brian Zapp in left field. He's batting six. Christian Tejada, we heard his name twice in the top half of the first inning. He's playing right field, batting seventh. David Novak will be behind the plate. And Dylan Baker will be anchoring the lineup out at second base. On the mound for the Siena Saints, Arlo Mariaznak. Mariaznak is. Played nine or pitched nine and a third inning this season. Seven earned runs given up. He's got an 0-1 record. 6.75 ERA. Brokman finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Mary Aznak. Fastball on the inside part of the plate. Brokman got his handle on it and stays alive. Chilly day out here in Oxford. 44 degrees, a little bit of wind, though 
It comes and goes. The sun is shining, though. 0-2 count here to the leadoff man. Fastball, good heater up in the zone. Misses, bringing it to one and two. Fastball blown by Brokeman. And that's a strikeout to begin the bottom half of the first. So a chance to take you through the Saints. Now they line up defensively. Schwarwick is behind the plate. That's the battery with Marzanak. Livingston out at first base. Stewart at second. Hines playing shortstop in. Barbero rounding out the left side of the infield playing third base. Montgomery in left. Camacho in center. And Thornburn out in the pasture in right field. Zach McDonald, the center fielder, step into the plate. And this Miami Red Hawks offense has been red hot to begin the season. Averaging nearly nine runs a game. And McDonald is batting 313. Marzanak with that 90 mile an hour fastball. Misses on the upper part of the plate. It's 2 0. Coming set. Hit well out into left field. Losing it is Montgomery. And McDonald's rounding first, head into second. So an air will get McDonald on second base. Montgomery out in left field, just lost the ball. Sun right in his eyes, try to leap up to make that grab, hit off the palm of his glove. And the Red Hawks are cooking. Ryland Zaborowski, five home runs to begin this season. He's batting 382, 13 hits on 34 at bats. And we mentioned this Red Hawks offense has been red hot. They won a shootout on Wednesday against local rival, the University of Cincinnati. As that was a good slider. Swung and miss on. McDonald on second. Zaborowski at the plate. Kicks, deals, up and in. Gets by the catcher, Schwarwick. And McDonald moves to third. The ball goes to the backstop, and here the Red Hawks are on the doorstep of taking the lead here in the first inning. Slider, nice pitch just off the heart of the plate. Three and one here to the power hitter. Kicks, deals, another breaking ball. Didn't want to give him anything straight. And that's a walk for Zaborowski. So put runners on the corners for Parker Lester. First baseman, just under 400 hitter here to begin the year. 393, 11 hits and 28 at bats. Hasn't started every game. Started six of the eight thus far. Five RBIs. Of those 11 hits, five of them are extra base hits, all doubles. So the fastball is blown by the left-handed swinging Lester. Lester. Owen won the count. Zabrowski taking a modest lead over at first base. Fastball misses upstairs. One and one's the count. One and one, runners on the corner, and that miss is downstairs. Bringing the count to two and one. Oh, 
Dimensions here at McKee Field, 332 down the left field line, 343 down the right field line, and Zaborowski is up and moving. Throw out to second base is in time. The throw to home, not. So they got the out at second for the second out of the inning, but the run does score in the form of McDonald swiping home. You practice that play all the time at practice, much to the chagrin of outfielders. The first to third plays. The Saints sacrificed a run in order to get that second out. And Lester finds himself with a 2-2 count. And a called strike three ends the inning, but the Red Hawks take the scoreboard first. It's 1-0, and we're heading to the top half of the second here. No errors and no runners left. At the end of one, it's... Top of the second here at McKee Field at Hayden Park here in Oxford, Ohio. Matt Livingston, Willie Schwarwick, and Dan Barbero do up for the Saints. Connor Oliver back on the mound. Worked himself out of a jam, and the first pitch he throws is hit into shallow left field. Coming in to make the play is Zap. Calls off Weiss, and that's the first out. So we mentioned it last inning. Connor Oliver throws a lot of strikes. And it has surprised Coach Aiden just the amount of strikeouts that he's racked up here in the early season. He's got a good four-pitch mix, and the second pitch of the inning is bounced over to Zaborowski. He throws it over to first to Lester. And that's two pitches, two outs for the Red Hawks. Nice play there by the third baseman. And now we'll see Dan Barbero. Fastball in there for a called strike. He's doing a good job of manipulating the baseball to get those strikeouts here. This is his third stop in his collegiate career. Started ball out at Wichita State. This is chopped over to the shortstop Weiss. He comes in, throws over to first baseman Lester on the run, and that is a quick inning for the Miami Red Hawks. We head to the bottom half of the second. It's 
Bottom of the second, Cooper Weiss, Brian Zapp, Christian Tejada do up for the Red Hawks. As they were able to scratch one across in the bottom half of the first. Fastball comes up and in. Missing on the strike zone. One and knows the count. Cooper Weiss on the young season. 333 hitter. Six hits and 18 at-bats, and he takes the 1-0 for a called strike. Weiss second on this team in RBIs. Ten ribbies through the first eight games. Swung on and missed there. Had a big night on Wednesday down there. Three for four, two runs scored, a home run, and four RBIs against the Bearcats. Slowly hits one over to the third baseman, Barbero. Offline throw, and Cooper Weiss reaches first on the air. Barbero pulled Livingston towards the first base dugout. And now Brian Zapp will step into the batter's box. Zapp had an RBI as well on Wednesday, as most of these Red Hawks did. Score 15 runs. Those aren't exactly coming at a premium. Marzanak coming set. Modest lead over there at first base for Weiss. And an early 2-0 count to Zapp. Zapp is third on the team and hitting. Third on the team in OPS. Two big flies. And these Red Hawks in just eight games have had 13 home runs. Weiss thought about going, and Schwarick was gearing up to throw down to second base. It's 2-1 to count on the called strike. Kicks, deals, just missing on the inside half. Schwarick can't believe it. And it's 3-1. Great hitters count here for the lefty. Weiss, three-step lead over at first base. Marzenich coming set. And that's going to be ball four. Air and a walk to begin this half of the inning. And even the novice of this game knows that is the recipe for a crooked number. And we're going to see a mound visit already here. So it took just six batters before the first mound visit of the game. Christian Tejada getting the start today. 294 hitter on the season. He started in three games. Five for 17 on the season. Talking to Coach Hayden, he was intrigued to see the season that Christian Tejada was going to have coming off an injury as he did last year. Becoming an everyday player once again. And a big time to shine here on the home opener. Mars Nick. Working almost exclusively the fastball slider combination, finds the heater on the outside half of the plate. And there's that slider. After getting the first pitch, heater goes right to that sharp slider, and it is a good pitch, just hasn't found it over the heart of the plate very much here in the early goings. The 1-1 one -one to Tejada. And there it is, over the plate, and Tejada just fouls it back over the first base dugout. He finds himself in a 1-2 hole. 
Weiss on second, Zap on first. The Saints looking to get a ground ball and help alleviate the air and walk that begin this inning. Both runners moving to Hata swinging. It's a foul ball that'll go out of play. Would have been strike three. Tahada had to foul it off, though Weiss did have a great jump. Weiss with no stolen base attempts on the season. Here comes the 1-2. Kick and deal. Fouled straight back. Tahada working this at bat. Tejada trying not to go down swinging. He's done it five times this year already. This Miami team strikes out a nearly a third of their at-bats. Fouled. And we'll keep it rolling once again. So after Connor Oliver throws a four-pitch inning in the top half, Tejada working a long at-bat here in the bottom half. One to the count once more. Bounce to second base. Stewart, Hine over to first, and Tejada after fouling off five straight pitches, grounds into a 4-6-3 double play, and that is what Marzenek needed on the bump. So Weiss moves to third base, and now you'll see the catcher, David Novak. One of the few bats in this lineup that is struggling. Just two hits and 17 at bats. First pitch slider taken off the outside part of the plate. Schwarwick lining up on that outside plate again. And the fastball over the heart of it is taken for a called strike one. Slider. It weakly down the right field line, giving chase is Thornburn, and he goes over the railing. Did he make the catch? I don't think he came down with it, and out come the doctors. The Siena's catcher, Schwerick, is supposed to work down the line and let the fielders know when he's running out of room. And Thornburn just went right over the foul line. And it looks like he's coming back over. They're checking on him, making sure he's okay. Heck of an effort out there. So there'll still be a runner on third base. One to the count here to Novak when play is resumed. And it looks like they will get a replacement out there. It is Gavin Thornburn. So he's actually marching back out there. The freshman from Massachusetts going all out to make the play. And we'll do it again here with the one-two count. So Miami looking to add on to their early lead, trying to get a second run across here in the bottom half of the second. One, two's the count to Novak, and that clips his jersey. Put him on first, and Dylan Baker's coming to the plate. So that is the third time that Novak's been hit this season. And just 20 one plate appearances. Now we'll see Dylan Baker. 
Dylan Baker is a 182 hitter, a red shirt sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Fastball's in there for a called strike. Hit weakly out to shallow left field. Underneath, it's going to be behind for the third and final out. So after an air and a walk begin the inning, a ground ball into a double play gets Sienna out of trouble. We head to the top half of the third. It's one to nothing here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. Top half of the third, Connor Oliver looking to repeat what he did in the second, a four-pitch inning. Danced out of trouble in the first, then the four-pitch. See what he has in store for the third. 8-9-1 due up for Sienna, and getting ready to hit is going to be none other than the guy that just went hurtling over the foul line, Gavin Thornburn. Leading off for Sienna, number 20, the right fielder, Gavin Thornburn. So Thornburn on the season. One sixty-seven on the season. Three hits and 18 at-bats for the freshman. It's his seventh start. And Oliver's nearly clipping 90 miles an hour on the fastball up and away. Thornburn showing bunt, pulls it back. It's 2-0. Here comes the 2-0, and it is taken for ball three. 3-0 three to the leadoff hitter, Thornburn. And it's a called strike 3-1. Great hitters count. Thornburn was getting ready to take off his shin guard. Kept it on. We'll do it again. Oliver, quick work. And runs it full on the foul ball that goes off the screen. See what of his four-pitch mix he goes with on the full count. And it's a fastball. Works it all the way back to full, then walks the leadoff man. Randall Hines stepping in to the batter's box. We'll see if they elect to bunt the nine hole. 103. Three hits and 30 at bats. Zaborowski coming in, landing on the grass colored turf. And the fastball's in there for a called strike. Modest lead for Thornburn over at first base. Oliver checks on him twice. Kicks, deals, finds that fastball on the outside half of the plate. 0-2. Oh Key field, sixth season with turf. I got it back in 2017. 
one of the more beautiful ballparks here in southwestern Ohio. Checks on the runner over at first. Here comes the 0-2. Fastball looking to get him to chase on the heater up. No dice. The 1-2 delivery. Working the outside. Top part of the zone, but can't find it. Runs at the 2-2. Two two. Randall Hine on the year has struck out 12 times. And 29 at-bats. Here comes the 2-2 delivery. That misses again, and he's struggling to bring the ball back down to earth. Leaving a lot of pitches up. And more and more pitchers are working the top half of the zone, especially when you've got a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Up and moving, Thornburn, but it's all for naught as it's ball four. So after a four-pitch inning in the second, Back-to-back -back walks to the 8-9 and nine hole, and now Oliver will hear from his shortstop, Weiss. Talking to Coach Aiden yesterday, just getting the lay of the land when it comes to these Red Hawks. He thinks that this pitching staff will carry them to their expectation. And when I mean expectation, this is a team that thinks that they can win the MAC play in the regionals, and they are not deterred by the start they've had to the season. Part of the reason they've had their start is the struggle on the mound. He sees the talent that they have in their arms, We're waiting for that to come to fruition. Checks on the base runner out at second base. Oliver's coming set. Here comes the delivery, showing bunt is Camacho, it's a called strike. He pulled it back, but it's a strike anyways. <laughs> so the leadoff man, Camacho, who's got the lone hit for the first time through the order, was showing Bunn, he'll take the 0-1 for a called strike. Oliver got two strikeouts with a runner in scoring possession back in the first inning. Could use one here. Breaking ball in the outside half of the plate. Here comes the one two. Kicks. Deal swung on and missed. Third strikeout of the game for Oliver. All coming with runners in scoring position. So now we'll see Donovan Montgomery. Montgomery. Called strike. It's an 82 to 88 to 92 mile an hour fastball from the left side for Oliver. But it plays a lot quicker. Here comes the 0-1. Fouled straight back. We'll do it with Montgomery in the well. Montgomery, the starting left fielder. See if Oliver can put down another. Called strike three. Novak stuck the pitch at the bottom of the zone and got a much needed strikeout for the Southpaw. So now it's Aiden Stewart, lefty on lefty. After the 8 9 hole, walk. To begin the action here in the top half of the third, Oliver one out away from dancing out of trouble. Misses downstairs to the second baseman. It's 1-0. and oh. hey, 
Aiden Stewart, two RBIs on the year. Hitting down in the 130s. Here comes the 1-1. 1-2 on the outside part of the plate. Working this cutter away from the lefty. Downstairs, misses, runs the count to two and two. Field playing straight up with runners on first and second. Weiss covering the bag with the lefty at the plate. Full count, so the runners will be up and moving here. Ball in the gap, scores two. Thornburn on second, Hine on first. The full count is flared into left field. Coming in to try and make the play is Zap, but he does not come with it. One run will score as it gets by the outreach glove of the diving Zap. Mark it two. So with the runners up and moving on the full count, a flare one out to left field. Zap doesn't make the play, and it's two to one on the base knock from Stewart. And that's when, as a fielder, you got to recognize the trajectory of the ball coming your way. Playing on turf here, it's going to skip by you if you don't come up and make the play, he's trying to keep the game without scoring a run. But if he keeps it in front of him, it's a 1-1 ball game. So score Thornburn, score Hine. And Aiden Stewart is on second base. Now they'll go out and talk to Connor Oliver. Vince to Nicola. He struck out looking his first time around. We'll step in. Aiden Stewart out at second base. The Saints just took the lead here in the top half of the third. And that's a changeup that gets Danicola out in front of the pitch. Comes up empty. Another pitch that works away from Danicola. Tough play. Weiss going out to the outfield. Coming in but not calling it. Is McDonald, he'll make the play. That Bermuda triangle between Weiss, McDonald, and, Wa and Zap. No one called it. McDonald came in and made the third and final out. We head to the bottom half of the third. The Siena Saints scored two runs on one single and two walks. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. To the bottom of the third, we go. Two ones our score. Top half of the order for the Miami Red Hawks. Looking to regain the lead after two walks and a base knock. Gave the Saints two runs in the top half of the third inning. 
Benji Brokemon struck out swinging his first time around. Steps back into the batter's box and comes up hacking. The upstairs fastball. No one wants the count. Brokemon's the designated hitter today. Swung on and missed. The 87 mile an hour fastball is tipped, but found in Schwarwick's glove. The 0 2 to Brokemon. And it's slapped into right field for a base knock. The second baseman, Aiden Stewart, shading towards the middle of the field. Brokemon just put the barrel on the fastball and slapped it out to right field. The center fielder, Zach McDonald. So now we'll see Zach McDonald. He scored the lone run for the Red Hawks the first time through the order. Takes the fastball upstairs. So Arlo Marzniak through nine and a third's inning pitch, 12 Ks. Checks on Brokemond over there at first base. Brokemond. Two for two on stolen base tries. Here comes the 1-0 delivery. Checks on him once again. Really doesn't want to get Benji Brokemon moving over there at first. So Zach McDonald. Lined one into center field and Brokemon's up and moving. High fastball thrown to second base is on the money in time as Schwarwick throws out his second runner of the game. And as a catcher, you see someone moving, you get a pitch in the upper part of the zone. That just gets the operations going. You can put the ball right to your ear, through a dart right to second base. And he's two for two on throwing guys out. McDonald on the 2-0, takes it. So the leadoff base knock is all for naught as Brokemon is caught stealing. A 3-0 taken, McDonald taking all the way. Beautiful day here in early March out in Oxford. Though we have been spoiled here in Southwest Ohio over the past few days as the 3-1 is swung on and missed. Been used to the 60 and 70 degree weather, so when you get 44, feels a little chilly, but it's an abnormal year. 44 in early March in Ohio, you take that. That's baseball weather if you ever heard it. Fouled straight back, it's 3-2. McDonald swings on the fastball. It's hit high into shallow center field. Camacho's underneath it for the second out of the inning. Barely had to move. So now we'll see Rylan Zaborowski. He walked his first time around, didn't see any straight pitches, and for good reason. Through eight games this season, already five home runs, nine extra base hits. He takes the first pitch for a strike. He started out the season with two big flies against Georgia Tech and had two this past Wednesday. So seeing the ball well here, as he fouls the fastball straight back. In fact, he's six for his last 10 at bats. As 
Zaborowski on the 0-2. Doesn't catch up to the heater upstairs, and that's a strikeout. A 1-2-3 inning from Marznik. We head to the top half of the fourth. It's 2-1. Two one our score here in the top half of the fourth inning. Reed Mouse on the call. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. Matt Livingston coming up to the plate. Willie Schwarwick and then Dan Arbero. We mentioned these two teams struggling to begin the year. Siena coming in at 0-9. The Miami Redhawks there at 1-7 through the first eight games. They got their first win on Wednesday. Livingston his first time around popped up to left field. But talking with Coach Hayden, the slow start hasn't deterred this team whatsoever. He said that in the locker room, they they still see how talented this team can be, the goals and what's ahead of them. And they're going to continue being consistent, showing up every day, working pitch to pitch. And he even mentioned, they don't really worry about big goals. Sure, they bring it up from time to time, but... They're more focused on what they do every pitch and in between every pitch. All you can do is what's in front of you. The 2-1 taken for a called strike. It's 2-2 on the breaking ball. So we've seen all four pitches from Connor Oliver. All within the strike zone. And Livingston pops one up on the left side of the field. Zaborowski shielding the sun with his glove. Near the coach's box, he'll have it for the first out. The catcher, Willie Schwarin. So now we'll see the catcher, Willie Schwarwick, and he has done a great job behind the plate. He's already attributed two outs. Right now both would be base runners. Both throws right on the money. He takes the first pitch. For a ball. He grounded out to Zaborowski his first time around in that four pitch inning all the way back in the second. So the 1 0 is swung on and missed, bringing it to 1 and 1. And Oliver working quickly out there on the bump. The 2-1 is in there for a called strike. So Oliver made, we mentioned this is his third stop. Started in Wichita State, then went to TCU. Last year for the Horned Frogs. Threw 11 innings, had a 9.82 ERA. There's the 2-2. Swung on and missed. Blown by Schwarwick. The 90 mile an hour fastball from the south ball. And that's strikeout number five. The third baseman, Danny Barbero. Oliver's from Oak Forest, Illinois. His senior season three years ago. He threw 44 innings and struck out six, 79 batters as a senior in high school. 
Now has found his way here in Oxford, Ohio. As this one is hit well into the sky. Zaborowski down the third baseline doesn't come up with it as he loses it in the sun and it just kept teetering back on him. Drifting. And that's going to fall for the second strike. Out there in shallow left field, Zab didn't get there in time to come in and make the play. You'd prefer the left fielder to come in and make that. That was a long run for Zap. Zaborowski had his back toward, toward center field. Not a called strike, and I think Oliver, Novak, and the entire infield thought it was. They retreat back to their positions for the 2-2. Fouled straight back. Two, two, two away. Barbero he grounded out to Weiss his last time around, and he comes up empty. The sixth strikeout for Connor Oliver through four innings, and the Red Hawks are going to look to get the sticks out here in the bottom half of it. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. Four, five, six, two up for the Red Hawks. They scored a run in the bottom half of the first inning. The hung zeros in the second and third. Parker Lester, who struck out looking his first time around, is stepping into the batter's box. Left-handed hitter. Miami looking to get their second win of the season here against Siena. Siena looking to get their first. Lester, I mentioned, struck out looking all the way back in that first inning. And Arlo Marzniak has done a nice job of settling in, even dancing out of trouble back there in the second frame. Swung on and missed. So after taking the first pitch, Lester chases downstairs. That's the count up at one and one. The Saints playing straight up. Third baseman Barbero playing in even with the third base bag. One and two is the count to the starting first baseman. Marzniak puts one over the outside half of the plate, and Parker Lester lines one into left field. Good job of Taking the pitch where it's pitched and sending it out to left field. And for the third consecutive inning, the leadoff man is on for the Red Hawks. Cooper Wise, the shortstop, steps into the batter's box. Marzniak has had trouble with his fastball, leaving it up at the top of the zone when there is runners on base. You see pitchers typically do this. They're used to their wind up, then when they have to come from the stretch, takes a pitch or two to, to ring it back in as though he misses the fastball upstairs again, Weiss chases. Modest lead 
For Parker Lester over at first, I can't imagine the Red Hawks are going to try Schwarwick too many more times in this series. And this is laid down. Barbero coming in, scoops it up, throws it over the first baseman Livingston and makes the play. So put a runner on second base. Wasn't a sacrifice attempt, but works like that. Now we'll see Zap. He walked his first time around. Called strike on the heater. Marzniak comes set, checks on the base runner. Throws another fastball at the top of the zone, and that looks juicy to these Red, Hot, Red Hawks hitters. Schwarwick giving the sign to Marzniak. Another fastball that Zap can't catch up to. Three heaters, three strikes. And that's the second out as Christian Tejada is going to step up to the plate. Tejada grounded out. Started the 4-6-3 double play his last time around. He'll step up with another runner in scoring position. This time with two away. Slider taking low and away. Red Hawks looking to tie this one up in the bottom half of the fourth. Christian Tejada swings at the fastball up and in, fouls it straight back. So one and one's the count. We mentioned it earlier that Coach Hayden was looking to see the season that Christian Tejada on the bounce back has. Everyday player hurt last year as he takes the slider on the outside half. going to be a major piece if this Miami team has success this season. The one and two to Tejada. Up and moving is going to be Parker Lester. He takes the third base bag. Slider It's going to miss up and in. So 2-2. Two, two. And now any extension of the inning. Infield single, one single, any of it, will score the run. 2-2 Two -two fouled straight back. Tejada worked along at bat last time before grounding out to the second baseman. Fouled off five, six pitches in a row. And he fouls off another slider. He's pesky to put down on strikes. So two and two again. Schwarwick gives the sign to Marzniak. And that's in the dirt. Good job. By Schwarwick, keeping it in front of him. Sometimes when you're a catcher, you don't even have time to get in the traditional blocking stance. Turn into a hockey goalie, just keeping it out in front. And that's what Schwarwick did right there to prevent the run from scoring. 3-2. Fouled over the first base dugout. Parker Lester led this inning off with a base knock. Got to second 
on the bunt, stole third, and now Tejada works an incredible at bat to walk. So though he grounded into a double play his first time around, Christian Tejada's done an excellent job of working long at bats. Making Marzniak throw plenty of pitches. David Novak. He's hit by a pitch his last time around. And they're going to check on Tejada. Now, how Miami scored their first run was on a first to third play. With one out, they sent Zaborowski in motion to score Zach McDonald. That was all the way back in the first inning. See if they try anything hanky with two outs here. Novak takes the first pitch. Fastball on the outside half. Oh, one's the count. Swung on and missed. So takes the first fastball for a strike. Chases at the 0 1 up and in. Tejada on first. Lester on third. Marzniak. Schwarick throws it down to second base. And now Tejada's caught out dead in between first and second base. And that's the third and final out as Tejada is tagged out in no man's land. And Parker Lester never took off for home plate. So they did try a first to third play unsuccessfully. Sienna sniffs it out. And that's the third and final out of the bottom half of the fourth. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. So after a weird conclusion to the fourth inning, we head to the top half of the fifth. Eight, nine, one due up for the Saints. Connor Oliver out there for another inning of work. Gavin Thornmill, Randall Hine, and Sean Camacho. I'm Reed Mouse here watching Chatterbox Sports. The first of a three-game series between the Red Hawks and the Siena Saints. We mentioned Sienna 0-9 on the season. Started off with a three-game, got swept by the University of Central Florida, then got swept in a four-game series against Jacksonville, and then swept in a two-game series against Stetson. So it's safe to say that Sienna was happy to leave Florida after facing three Florida teams and coming up winless. So Thornburn walked his last time around. Came around and scored on that base hit out to left field that scored two runs. 0-2 is the count. Fastball, try to get Thornburn to chase on the heater. No dice. Got him on the cutter on the outside half of the plate. Throws Thornburn. And now we'll see Randall Hine. 
Hine walked, came around, and scored his first time. Fastball in there for a called strike. Hine, the starting shortstop for the Saints. Owen twos the count. They're gonna check on the swing. No, he didn't go. Barely got the bat off his shoulders. Called strike three as Hine doesn't get the bat off of his shoulders. Takes four pitches, goes down looking. So that is strikeout number eight for Connor Oliver. Two in every inning thus far besides the second. So the 91 mile an hour fastball upstairs. Comes up empty for the leadoff hitter, Sean Camacho. And now Camacho finds himself in an 0-2 hole. One, two, three, strikes out the side. Connor Oliver is feeling it. Nine strikeouts through five innings pitched. Now it's time for the Red Hawks to get the bats going. Stay tuned, you're watching Shatterbox Sports. Eight nine one two up for the Red Hawks. They're trying to get some runs on the board to help out their starting pitcher, Connor Oliver. Nine Ks through five innings pitched. He has the strikeout pitch working. It's the first time all year that the Red Hawks are holding their opponents off the scoreboard. And they're averaging nine runs a game at the plate. Haven't got it through the midpoint of this one. So we'll see David Novak lead off for the Red Hawks. Arlo Marsniak. First pitch is a slider that is fouled over in the visitor's bullpen. Oh, 1 here to Novak. Novak was hit by a pitch his first time around. He hits this one deep into right center field, giving chase is Camacho. He won't come up with it. It rattles off the base of the wall, and Novak slams a double to begin this bottom half of the fifth inning. We mentioned Novak coming into today, a 118 hitter. Just two hits on the season. That's hit number three. They came to lead off this fifth. And when you're struggling at the plate, just finding that barrel feels so good. Can oftentimes be just a massive relief. So now we'll see Dylan Baker. The Saints getting ready for the sacrifice bunt, both the first base and the third baseman coming in well in front of the bags. Baker swings at the first pitch. We'll see if he squares around for the second. No, he's 
Swinging all the way. It's flared out beyond the third baseman. Underneath it's going to be Randall Hine for the first out. So pop out to the shortstop will be the first out of the inning, and we'll see Benji Brokemont. Brokemont slapped a single through the three-hole. His last time around before being caught stealing and is just having trouble catching up to Marzniak's fastball. Harlow's looking over in the dugout, talking to his coach. Here comes the 0-1. Fouled straight back, 0-2 the count. Come set. Runner on second base, one away. Benji Brokman takes the fastball, lays off that upstairs heater. Marzniak has three strikeouts of the game thus far. Mark that four strikeouts. Benji Brokman is one of them. Fouled back. One, two. Slider. Taken, but not a called strike three. Couldn't have missed by a lot. Two and two's the count. So Sienna and Marzniak can't believe that that slider missed off the plate. Here comes the two, two. Fastball that Brokemont can't catch up to. Fouled down the right field line. So Novak out on second base. And they're going to run a pick play. Not Novak sleeping, but... Couldn't get the tag on him in time. Hine dashed for second base. Novak didn't hear the footsteps. So here's Benji Brokemont. 2-2. Two -two. Lined over Hines outreach glove for a base knock. That'll score a runner. And Benji Brokemont ties the game at two. So Brokemont with his second base hit of the game. And it's 2-2 with one away here in the bottom half of the fifth. Zach McDonald will step in to the batter's box. The sophomore. He had two doubles on Wednesday against Cincinnati. Pair of hits in each of his last two starts. This is hammered out to left center field. It's got a chance. Bye bye. McDonald sends one for a ride over the 376 sign out in left center field. It's 4 to 2 Miami Redhawks. So Zach McDonald over the left center field wall. He knew it right away. Third hit of the inning for the Red Hawks, and they regain the lead for their starting pitcher, Oliver. So Marzniak, after giving up a run in the first inning, had worked his way out of trouble in the second, third, and fourth inning. 
But finally, the Red Hawks tag on as McDonald gets his second big fly of the year. Marsnik's not out of the woods yet as he's got to face the heart of this Red Hawks order. Ryland Zaborowski takes the 2-0 for a called strike. He's walked and struck out, so you have to put a ball in play. Was caught stealing back in the first inning. The 2-1 fastball comes up empty on the swing. The 2-2 from Marzniak. Called strike three on the outside half. And now we'll see Parker Lester. The first baseman, Parker Lester. Not a lot of protest from Zaborowski, though it looked like it might have missed off the outside half. Lester singled his last time around. Unable to bring him in. As the leadoff base knock came unrequited. Bat around here and bring him up one inning later. Quickly finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Swung on, strike three, but not before the Miami Red Hawks plate three runs. Novak led the inning off with a double. Benji Brokman with the single. And then finally, Zach McDonald with the exclamation point to make it four to two. Stay tuned. We head to the sixth inning here on Chatterbox Sports. Two, three, four, do up for the Siena Saints as they're going to look to recapture the lead they just relinquished. A three run bottom of the fifth inning gave the Red Hawks and Connor Oliver the advantage here as we head to the top half of the sixth. Donovan Montgomery, Aiden Stewart, and Vince DeNicola do up for the Saints. And Montgomery, who's flown out to right field and struck out looking. Finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Here comes the 0-2. Fastball tailing away from the hitter. Misses the zone. Low and away. Oliver's got the strikeout pitch working as the next batter he puts down on strikes will be the 10th. 2-2. Popped up here, foul territory, but it'll go out of play as Lester will run out of room, and we'll do it again once more at two and two. The two-two fastball up and in, 
Does not find the strike zone. Runs the count full. So Montgomery doing a good job at working this count all the way back to full, and he'll walk after finding himself in an 0-2 hole. So put a runner on first to begin this top half of the sixth. Three, third walk of the game for Oliver. And Aiden Stewart fought, takes the breaking ball for a called strike, 0-1. Here comes the 0-1, misses low and away. Stewart waiting on the pitch from Oliver, fouls it over the third base dugout. One and two. Be hard pressed to find a campus more beautiful than here at Miami University. Uniformity in all the buildings, the red brick. Looks great as Aiden Stewart sends one into right field, gets through the four hole. Montgomery never slows down. Tejada doesn't field it cleanly. And the runners will be split between first and third. So Sienna looking to answer back after giving up a three spot in the bottom half of the fifth. And now we'll see Vince DeNicola. So Vince DeNicola struck out and he's flown out to center field. First pitch swing and flares one down the right field line. It blows foul. To Nicola back in the first inning, struck out looking, then he flew out to center field his last time around. Montgomery over on third, Stewart out at first. Oliver looking to give the 0-1. Kicks, deals, couldn't get it on top of the pitch. Brings it to one and one. Two and one now the pitch. Nicola on the season. Three RBIs, which is leading the Saints roster. Takes the 2-1, top part of the zone, but it's a called strike. Mentioned Dana Cola's the one in this lineup that has started every game, and Oliver gets a big strikeout. His 10th of the game on Vince Dana Cola. Got him chasing upstairs, and now we'll see Matt Livingston, who's flown out twice, both to the left side of the field. First to zap out and left. And then to Zaborowski out at third base. Runners up and moving, Aiden Stewart. No foul tip called, so Stewart will take second base. Runners in scoring position, the tying run out at second. Matt Livingston, 0-83 oh, on the season. Just one hit and now 14 at bats. Now he does have two RBIs on the year. Here comes the 0-2 delivery to the lefty. Chops it over to the second baseman, makes a nice play. Baker throws it over to Lester. Plate the run, but get the second out for the Red Hawks. Baker did a nice job drop-stepping, closing out the hole there in the four-hole. 
Fielding it before it slipped through. A nice toss over to Lester. And now we'll have a talk here. As Willie Schwarwick comes to the plate. So the third RBI of the season for Matt Livingston. Makes it a 4-3 ball game. Aiden Stewart moves the third base, and we're going to see a new arm. Connor Oliver, his longest outing of the season. He goes five and two-thirds inning pitch, 10 Ks, allows three runs, and we'll have a new arm to tell you about when we come back. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. First pitching change of the game. It's the right-hander Hudson Leach who's coming in relief for Connor Oliver. We mentioned five and two-thirds innings pitch, 10 Ks, three walks, three runs given up. He's on the hook for one more, though he's currently got three earned runs. He allowed just three hits over his work currently in line for the win. Hudson Leach on the season. This will be his third outing. He's got nine and one-third inning pitched, six earned runs given up, 14 Ks. He's allowed just five hits on the season. He gave up all five earned runs against North Alabama last week. So Willie Schwarwick, who's 0 for 2 on the season, on the day, rather, he's grounded out and struck out. We'll step into the batter's box to try and tie this game up at four. A 1-0, fouled straight back. And we mentioned, talking to Coach Hayden, I asked who's first two guys out of the bullpen. Quickly coming out of his mouth was Hudson Leach. And there's a long list of guys, but they're going to be the Cowbells this year. Chopped down the third baseline. It gets past the outreach glove of Zaborowski. And Schwarwick ties up the game with... A double. Chopped it down the line. You ask any hitting coach in America, they'll take well placed over well hit. Schwarwick didn't hit it hard. But it gets the job done and it is tied up at fours. Officially close the book on Oliver. No longer in line for the win. Four earned runs given up. So now we'll see Dan Barbario. The third baseman will foul one back. Barbario 0 for 2. And finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Leach trying for the fastball upstairs. We'll have more about Hudson Leach coming out of the next inning. One, two's the count. Swung on, foul tipped, but held on by Novak. Leach gives up a run after the soft double down the third base line. Plates the second run of the inning. It's four to four. We're headed to the bottom half of the second here on Chatterbox Sports.
Five, six, seven, two up for the Miami Red Hawks. It's a 4-4 ball game. Cooper Weiss, Brian Zapp, Christian Tejada. Or Mosniak out for another inning of work. This team just helped him out after giving up the two-run big fly last inning. The Saints came back to tie the game up. Cooper Weiss. Reach base his first time up on an air. Did not come around to score. Then laid down a bunt his second time, which was good for a sacrifice to move the runner over, though it wasn't initially intended for that. Owen wins the count to Cooper Weiss. Marzniak looks down. Then... Hurls a slider on the outside half. One and one's the count. Kicks, deals, and Weiss can't catch up to the fastball up and in. Marzniak has missed up quite a bit this game. You see more and more pitchers, especially with a good fastball, try to attack that top part of the zone, which is a complete 180 from how pitchers were taught 15, 20 years ago to go towards the bottom half of the zone. And the upstairs fastball draws Cooper Weiss's attempt, and he comes up empty for the first out of the inning. So now we'll see Zap. A walk and a strikeout. So yet to register in that bat today. Lays down the bunt down the first baseline. It will go foul. Livingston coming up to kill the ball. Marzniak has now struck out the last three batters he's faced. Ever since giving up that big fly has come back and Found great command of the strike zone. Fastball just misses. Zaps hip. One and one our count. One and two. Marin check. Kicks, deals. Fastball misses outside. Bringing it to two and two. Zap looking. Something over the middle of the plate. He gets it, but comes up empty. Marincheck with his fourth consecutive strikeout. His eighth of the game. And we mentioned coming into today, Miami has struck out in a, nearly a third of their at-bats. So now we'll see Christian Tejada, and he's put together two fantastic at-bats. Drew a walk his last time around, grounded into a double play his first time up, and just refuses to go down on strikes. Now Marincheck has been putting him down with ease as of late. O2 the count. Aaron check kicks, deals, slider. This is low and away. Come on, low. 
Tejada waiting the one two. And he'll chase on the fastball on the outside half of the plate. Strikes out the side and five in a row for Marincheck as he's found his groove through the middle part of this ball game. We head to the top half of the seventh. We're all knotted up at fours. Gavin Thornburn, Randall Hine, and then the top half of the order due up for the Siena Saints. Four-four, our score as Hudson Leach is out there for another inning of work. Thornburn, strikeout looking and a walk. He came around and scored his first time around. Leach, fastball called strike. Let's talk a new. Coach Hayden about Hudson Leach, and he was talking he's got an elite fastball, at least velocity-wise. He's got a four-pitch mix. And he keeps on coming at you. His fastball runs up there at about the mid-90s. And the one thing that he said is this, if he's even halfway dialed in, he just makes you uncomfortable in the plate. He's got four very good pitches on top of that elite fastball. You can just never find yourself comfortable in the batter's box. So here's the one, two. A hammer. Got Thornburn swinging and missing for the first out. Late break on that break bender. And now Randall Hine will step up to the batter's box. First pitch in there for a called strike. Hine, another one that walked his first time around. Came around and scored, and then struck out looking his second time. So Thornburn and Hine, the exact same sheet to this point of the ball game. Let's see if he follows suit. It's 1-1. Can't get that come back to earth. The 83 mile an hour breaking ball. Here comes the 2-1. It's in there for a called strike. Registering at 93 miles an hour. Leach. Come set, kicks, deals, called strike three. And Randall Hine never stood a chance. And now it's Sean Camacho. A single and two strikeouts. And that's going to... Bounce off the turf and hit the umpire in the shin guards. Luckily, that's why you wear that equipment. One and oh. Downstairs once again. And Leach, after striking out the bottom half of the order, falls behind the leadoff man. Not a cloud in the sky here in Oxford, Ohio.
Two ones the count. Misses on the outside half of the plate. And he falls behind three and one to Camacho. Popped up into left field. Zap shielding the sun with his gloves. Camped underneath it. He'll have it for the third and final out of the top half of the seventh. Still knotted up at fours. We head to the bottom half of the seventh inning. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. Everyone got up and stretch. We're heading to the bottom of the seventh inning. Eight, nine, one, two up for the Miami Red Hawks. David Novak, Dylan Baker, and Benji Rokemon. David Novak got it going in the fifth inning, doubling off the wall. And Marinchek's back out there for his seventh inning of work and finds the strike zone on the first pitch of the inning. It's a one. No one's in there for a called strike. Oh, and two. We mentioned Novak struggling here in the early going of the year, but found the barrel his last time around. And that could be a huge sigh of relief for these hitters. Fouled back. Sitting still at 0 oh and 2. Marinchek, after giving up a three run fifth inning has since struck out five consecutive batters working on number six here in the form of Drew Novak. And he got it. Six in a row for Marinchek. Strikeout number 10 for Marinchek. Aaron check. Fastball to Baker. Foul tipped. Owen wants the count. Aaron checks a fifth year here for Siena. Del Mar, New York. Fouled straight back. It's 0 2. Came into today with 12 strikeouts and nine innings pitched. Got six strikeouts and zero earned runs against Jacksonville last week. Against UCF in his first outing of the year. Gave up seven earned run, and this is sent a mile, but foul. As Baker finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Aaron Check comes set. Number seven in a row for Arlo Marinchek. Ever since Zach McDonald sent one for a ride, he struck out every batter he's faced since. Benji Brokman with an RBI single his last time up, came around and scored on that big fly. Looking to put a ball in play, he bunts one foul. 
Looking to catch the defense sleeping. Owen won the count to Brokemon. He's two for three on the day. Two singles and a strikeout. Marin check. 11 Ks. Seven in a row. One and one's the count. Still sitting around the upper 80s. 88 is what that last fastball registered. Marin check. Finds the strike zone, bringing it to one and two. Another heater almost going exclusively heater and slider today. One, two. Fouled. Missed it over the first base dugout. We'll do it again at one and two. Here comes the one, two. Slider almost gets Brokemon to go after it. He keeps the bat on his shoulder wisely and runs the count to two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Two away here in the bottom half of the seventh. Arlo Marincheck has found his stride in these later innings. He kicks, deals, misses on the outside half. So Zach McDonald waits on deck if they shall get to him. Benji Brokeman just trying to put the ball in play. In fact, the last Red Hawks batter to put the ball in play was Brokeman on that single. And he chops one over to the shortstop. Hine throws it over to Livingston. The lefty scoops it out of the turf. And it's the third and final out here in the bottom half of the seventh. Stay tuned, you're watching Chatterbox Sports. Final two innings of this one, top half of the eighth. We're still at 4-4. The Siena Saints looking to get their first win of the season. The Red Hawks looking to nab their second. 2-3-4 due up for the Saints. Donovan Montgomery, Aiden Stewart, Vince Tinicola. Montgomery walked his last time around. Came around and scored. Showing bunt, takes the first pitch from Hudson Leach, who's out for another inning of work for a called strike. <laughs> 0 1 is taken on the inside half, brings it to 1 and 1. Fouled straight back, bringing it to one and two. Montgomery, the starting left fielder. We mentioned he struggled to the early part of this year. But so has most of this Siena lineup. Go, 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 go. 
He's in his senior season. Montgomery pops one high down the right field line, giving chase is Christian Tejada. He's on the line. He loses it, but it's a foul ball as that goes beyond his head. Second foul ball that the Red Hawks have lost. So this is Montgomery's third season starting. As a sophomore, batted 255. Junior, batted 217. Two, two. Called for a called strike three. Montgomery goes down looking. And now we'll see Aiden Stewart, the three hole. Tony Rossi is in his 54th season as the head coach of the Siena Saints and is looking to bring his Saints home a win. Their first of the year as Leach blows one by Aiden Stewart. In fact, Tony Rossi's the longest tenured coach in Division I baseball history. The 0-2 is taken upstairs. Breaking ball doesn't come back down to earth. Fouled straight back. A one, two. Swung on and miss, and Hudson puts down another. Five strikeouts all ready for Hudson Leach. So an in steps Vince Dinicola. Swung on and miss. Taken straight back. So Tony Rossi came in to the Siena Athletics head coaching job all the way back in 1969. So here comes the 0-2. Swung on a miss. Six strikeouts for Hudson Leach as he strikes out the side. We head to the bottom half of the eighth where the Red Hawks are looking to take the lead. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. The bottom of the eighth, we go. Two, three, four, do up for the Miami Red Hawks. It's do or die time. As Miami's looking to win their second game in a row. Got a new arm to tell you about. It's a southpaw, Billy Rosakis, the sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. He'll be replacing 
Arlo Marinchek, who exits, exits the game. Seven innings pitched, four earned runs, and struck out seven of the final eight batters he faced. Marinchek, his pitch count was up in the 120s as he exits the game. So Billy Rosakis coming in. This will be his third outing on the season. He's thrown 10 innings, given up six earned runs in those 10 innings, and has struck out seven batters in those 10 innings. So Rosakis will face the middle of the order. Zach McDonald, Rylan Zaborowski, and Parker Lester. McDonald sent one for a ride his last time around, and that was the last Miami hit. In fact, before Benji Brokman grounded out to the shortstop to conclude the seventh inning, Zach McDonald was the last one to put the ball in play, although he really didn't. So went over the 376 sign to make it then 4-2. to two. One one here to McDonald. Rosakis kicks, deals, gets the pitch tailing away from McDonald and it's going to come up empty. One and two. Breaking ball doesn't come back down to earth. This is up and away. McDonald, the starting center fielder today. Comes up empty on the fastball at the top part of the zone. So now we'll see Rylan Zaborowski. He's yet to put the ball in play today. Walk in two Ks. Rosakis, the fastball in there for a called strike, sitting at 88 miles an hour. The starting third baseman. Fouls one back. He finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Rosakis kicks, deals. And it's fouled back. We'll do it once more at 0-2. Oh <laughs> Southball tries the outside half. Schwarwick couldn't believe it. Rosakis couldn't either. So now the home plate umpire is gonna gonna dust off the the home plate with no dirt on it. One and two. Here's to be some chirping. One, two. Zaborowski hits one out to right field. Doesn't have much behind it. Underneath it is the right fielder, Thornburn, and the freshman will have it for the second out. So now we'll see Parker Lester. One for three on the day, two Ks to his name. A base hit back in the fourth inning. Swing on and miss. The first pitch from Rosakis. The 0 1. Be lined right back where it came from. And Lester gets his second base knock of the day. Yeah. 
And now we'll see Cooper Weiss. Weiss 0 for 2 on the day. Reached on an air all the way back in the second inning and struck out his last time around. And try to lay back, lay down a bunt in the fourth. Trying to get something going here with two away. Rosakis kicks and deals. Lester over at first base. He stole third earlier this ball game. He's four for five on the season coming into today. And Schwarwick won't be able to bring it in. So they'll put a runner in scoring possession on the pass ball. So three O's the count. Taken for ball four. Runner on first, runner on second, and now we'll see Brian Zapp. And we'll see if we'll see a different batter because Zapp is a lefty. Looks like we are going to see a new batter. Number 20, Steven Kraus. Assuming that Sienna doesn't go to a different arm here. Coach Hayden's going to be locking that one in. Steven Kraus on the season. Four hits and 13 at bats. Five RBIs, one big fly, two doubles. Roush is a red shirt senior. One of the few on the roster from Southwestern Ohio, from Wilmington. Hit his home run all the way back in the season opener against Georgia Tech. After starting the season, four for seven is O for his last six. Chance to give his team the lead here in the bottom half of the eighth. First pitch is fouled off his leg. Goes in fair territory, but they called it dead before it got out there. Rosakis started out the inning getting the first two batters, but since has given up a single and a walk. One and one the count. Coming set, kicks, deals, chopped foul. And he can start here in the dugouts, chirping a little more as this game comes down the wire. One, two from Rosakis to Kraus. Fouled straight back. We'll do it again. When you foul it straight back, you're typically right on top of the ball. We'll see what Rosakis comes with. Down in the dirt. Schwarwick loses his glove. Two and two's the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on here for Steven Kraus. Coming off the bench, trying to give his team the lead. Rosakis comes, set Schwarwick, setting up on the outside part of the plate. Rosakis misses his spot, but Kraus fouls it back. Here comes the 2-2. And he gets Kraus out in front of the changeup. Kraus comes off the bench. Rosakis sets him down. We head to the top half of the ninth. We'll see Hudson Leach out for another inning of work. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox.
Top of the ninth here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. Five, six, seven, due up for the Siena Saints as Matt Livingston will line one into right center field for a base knock, and that's how the Siena Saints will start off the top half of the ninth. One pitch, one swing. comes off the tail end of Hudson Leach, striking out the side in the eighth. It's the second base hit that Leach has given up in his relief work. Billy Schwarwick hit that double that tied up the game all the way back in the sixth inning. And since then, Leach has struck out six of the eight batters he's faced. So speaking of Schwarwick, He steps into the batter's box. A one for three. That double all the way back in the sixth inning, tied up the game, and we haven't seen a run since. Leach comes set. Schwarwick puts the ball, the bunt on the turf, and Leach delivers a strike over to Lester at first base for the first out. So good job by the catcher. Schwarwick in sacrificing himself to put a runner in scoring position. And now we'll see the seven hole, Dan Barbero. That is a hammer for a strike one. Oh, one. From Leach, another breaking ball. And Barbero does a good job of just fouling it straight back. Leach checks on the runner, kicks, deals. It's a fastball that's sent into shallow left field. Zap can't get to it. Waits on the bounce. They opt not to send the runner to home. The throw over to second base, not in time. Base knock, takes second base on the throw into the infield, and there are runners in scoring position for the Saints as the freshman. Gavin Thornburn comes up to make his name for Siena. And I can't believe that they opted not to send the runner home as the big bounce gave probably just enough cushion to make a dash for home and take the lead. And it's worth mentioning that Matt Livingston was pinch ran for. By Castronovo. So here we go. Infield in, two runners on. Top of the ninth inning in a 4-4 ball game. Oh, 0-1 count here to the eight hole. Gavin Thornburn looks to lay down the bunt. He takes the breaking ball for strike two. And Leach, who has good enough stuff to put you down on strikes. Needs a K in the biggest way here in the top half of the ninth. Kicks, deals, it's a breaker. Thornburn turns in, just misses his lower half. Leach, the 95 mile an hour heater is fouled over the first base dugout. One and two. And it is lined into center field. One run will come around to score. 
Here comes Barbero. He comes in. It's six to four. The freshman, Gavin Thornburn, singles one into center field to make it six to four. So you're reminded that Gavin Thornburn all the way back in the second inning went full extension over the right field wall in chasing a foul ball. Medical staff came in and checked on him. And here he is, the freshman coming out in the top half of the ninth inning facing mid-90s fastball and sends it right back where it came from to bring in two runs. Now the nine hole, Randall Hine will step up to the plate. Looking to continue this ninth inning. The Saints bottom half of the order got it done for the second time today. That is fouled back, bringing it to one and one. Leach comes set. Called strike at the top half of the zone. Leach coming set. Checks on the runner over at first, and that's going to send Thornburn to second. He's looking to turn. He's going to go for three. The throw from Christian Tejada out in right field's not in time. And the errant pickoff attempt will send Thornburn all the way to third, and the Saints have another runner in scoring position. 90 feet away from taking a three-run lead. And Leach loses a breaking ball that goes over Hines' head. Fastball taken upstairs, and you hear Sienna's dugout getting into it. Full count, one out. Another run 90 feet away, and Randall Hine takes called strike three. So two away, and we go back to the top half of the order for the Saints, Sean Camacho. Camacho, one for four day thus far. Tries at the changeup on the outside half. And now the ball in the dirt brings it back to one and one. Camacho awaits the pitch from Hudson Leach. Backs off, bends out of danger as the fastball upstairs makes it a two and one count. And Leach talking to Coach Hayden said that he can make you feel uncomfortable in the box. And over the last few batters, he's kind of lost control. He was. Back in the eighth inning, was dominant. Struck out the side. Now he's all over the place. As Camacho fouls the 3-1 on a bunt attempt. Full count. And this is lined softly into center field. Up to make the play is Baker. And that's the third out. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning where the Siena Saints are looking to get their first win of the year, though the Red Hawks are trying to get the sticks out. Stay tuned. You're watching Chatterbox Sports.
bottom of the ninth inning here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. It all comes down to this. Seven, eight, nine due up for the Red Hawks. Can they turn it over like the bottom half of the Saints lineup did? We'll see a new arm, Noah Rodriguez, the sophomore right-hander. He'll be in relief. Billy Rosakis. Rosakis coming out of the pen. Two innings pitched. Did not give up a run. Noah Rodriguez is coming out for his now fifth appearance on the year. Just four and one-third innings pitched. He has given up four earned runs, struck out seven in his four and one-third innings pitched. So we'll see Christian Tejada. Tejada 0 for 2 on the day. Has worked a walk back in his second plate appearance. Struck out his last time up. Rodriguez, the first pitch. A ball, a fastball in the inside half. 91 miles an hour from the right-hander. Two zero here. David Novak's on deck, or at least slated to be on deck. And Dylan Baker before the Red Hawks get back to the top half of the order. Following Christian Teata here, squibbed over towards Livingston at first base. That's one up, one away here for Miami. So Rodriguez in his last two times out of the pin did not give up an earned run, though in each time he's needed to get a full inning, he has. So now we'll see David Novak. Novak takes the first pitch on the inside half of the plate for a called strike. He had that double back in the fifth inning. That got the Red Hawks going on their three-run inning. Struck at his last time at the plate. The 0-1 is taken upstairs for a called ball. Miami has struck out 13 times today. A 1-1 from Noah Rodriguez. Take it on the inside half. Two and one. One away here in the bottom half of the ninth, and the Red Hawks are going to have to get a rally together. Squibbed over towards Barbera, the throw over to first in the turf, but Livingston scoops it up for the second out, and the Red Hawks are down to their final out. And we're going to see the freshman, Tommy Harrison. Tommy Harrison coming in to hit for Dylan Baker. Harrison's been in the lineup pretty much every game this season. Starting catcher wasn't in the lineup today. Freshman from St. Edwards, Cleveland, Ohio. Had an 0 for 4 day at the plate against Cincinnati on Wednesday. Lefty going to try and extend this ball game. Changeup misses upstairs. Finds himself at a 2-0 count. You wonder if the red light's going to be on. Two zero, two away. Red Hawks down two. This is on the outside half. You got to imagine Tommy Harrison's not going to be taking the bat off his shoulder right here. A 
3 0 is in there for a called strike. Three one. Ball four to Tommy Harrison. So he comes off the bench and walks to get Miami back to the top half of the order. And we're going to see a pinch runner for Tommy Harrison. So he did his job. Blake Buzio is going to be pinch running for Harrison. Buzio. A sophomore from St. Edwards. So St. Edwards for, to St. Edwards between Tommy Harrison and Blake Buzio. Benji Brokmon, the leadoff man for Miami, steps up to the plate. Two for four on the day. He played at home a run back in that fifth inning. And he grounded out to the shortstop his last time around. Takes the first pitch for a called ball. And with the heart of the order due up, Zach McDonald, the two-hole on deck. You got to wonder if Brokemon's going to be very selective at the plate as he pops up the 1-0 in the infield. Livingston's underneath it for the third and final out. And the Siena Saints take home the first game of this three-game series, 6-4. to four. They played it two runs in the top half of the ninth inning from a base hit of Gavin Thornburn. They go one and nine while Miami falls to one and eight. We'll be back with the second game of this series here when it's going to get started. So we'll tell you more about that here in a moment. But we'll be back here on Chatterbox Live. Okay. 